What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be going through and setting up my brand new Hoyt RX-7. So, I've had this bow for a while now, but I went ahead and set up the Hoyt Ventum Pro first and shot all my total archery challenges with that bow, as well as turkey hunted, and uh, just target practice, and just really, really enjoyed that bow. Still enjoy that bow. I'm actually taking it on my first antelope hunt of the year here in like a few days. But right after the antelope hunt, we're diving straight into elk hunting. So this RX-7, I am specifically setting up for my Western hunts, my Western big games. So elk, mule deer, I'll be able to use both my Ventum Pro as well as this new RX-7 for whitetail hunting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and show you guys what color combinations I went with as well as go over all the specifications of the brand new 2022 Hoyt RX-7. How about that? That is a good looking bow. So there we have it, the brand new 2022 Hoyt Carbon RX-7. Uh, this bow in particular is not the ultra model. So this is 30 inches axle to axle. It's got a six and a quarter inch brace height, IBO speeds of 342 feet per second, new cam system, uh, new riser. There's quite a few features on this bow that is brand new for 2022 that I will be going through and going over with you guys. But as you can see, color wise, I got it in the wilderness green riser with the real tree edge limbs. I'm so excited to get this bow paired up with a brand new set of America's Best Bow Strings Whitetail Fit Signature Series. As you guys probably already know, I have ran the America's Best Bow Strings Platinum Series on my bows for quite some time now. And I've been nothing but impressed with these strings and cables. They have held up to all of the abuse that I put them through out west, back home in the Midwest, whitetail hunting, all sorts of different weather conditions. Never deal with peep twist or rotation, string stretching really bad. They're just a great set of strings and cables and uh, I've been trusting them on my bows for years now. So anyway, gonna go ahead and put the Whitetail Fit Signature Series strings and cables on this brand new RX-7, get them all tuned up and uh, start putting some accessories on the bow as well as tying in a peep sight, D-loop knock sets, getting the rest all dialed and getting this thing tuned up and ready to go elk hunting in September. But first, a little bit more about the bow. The bow is 3.9 pounds out of the box, just like this. So pretty dang light bow. New features for this year, much like the Ventum Pro in my previous video. By the way, if you haven't seen that previous video and you wanna see a bow build of the 2022 Hoyt Ventum Pro, go ahead and click this box right here. Get yourself over to that video after you watch this video. This bow has got an all new HBX Pro cam system, all new for 2022. They completely revised the cam system. It is the smoothest, fastest, easiest drawing, and just all around most powerful cam system that Hoyt has put out to date. Uh, absolutely love this cam system on my Ventum Pro. It has been awesome to shoot. We've got an all new shock pod system on the riser to help dampen any vibration or noise, as well as an integrated rest system for your rest. Now, much like my Ventum Pro, I'm gonna be running the Hoyt Ultra Rest MX on this bow. It is a micro adjust drop away rest that I've been using for years and absolutely love it. The sight that I'm gonna be running on this bow is the Black Gold Pro three pin. Um, this is a fully adjustable First, second, third axis, um, very high end black gold sight. I'm running the black gold dual track on my Ventum Pro and absolutely loving that sight. So decided to go with the black gold Pro for my Hoyt RX-7. 
Also on this bow, I'm going to be running the tight spot shift lock five arrow quiver in Realtree camo. This bow also has the short stop stabilizer, same technology as they used on the previous year's bows. This bow in particular I got with the 70 to 80 pound limbs and I got the number two cam. I'm a 27 inch draw, which is perfect. So anyway, let's get this thing put in the press, get it set up with the brand new America's Best Bow Strings and get it dialed, get it tuned and ready for my September elk hunt coming up. Guys, we are here. It is just a few weeks away. It's gonna be September. We're gonna be chasing bugles in the mountains as well as hunting early season whitetail. Cannot wait. I know you guys can't either. So anyway, let's get into it. As I said before, I went with the Whitetail Fit Signature Series colors. These are actually custom colors that you can get on the America's Best Bowstrings website. How you get them, you go to the string builder, the custom string builder, select the Platinum Series and click on the Whitetail Fit Signature Series. That will be the color. So anyway, if you click on that, order that, this is what you're going to get. First thing I'm going to replace is the string, then I'm going to replace the cables. But one thing I like to do while the bow is sitting in the press like this, I like to take a picture of the cams as they sit. So I can go back if I need to and reference where any of the strings and cables were or how things were oriented before I took things off. Um, it's pretty easy to take them off and put something right back on the way it was. I do that for a lot of different things, construction, automotive, uh, any type of repairs that I'm doing where something has to go back exactly the way it was. I just like to take photos for reference so I can come back and look at it if I need to. But it's pretty straightforward the way things are oriented on these cams. When you take it off, you put it right back on the way it was. When you're replacing these, you'll see these paper clips here that ABB has put on the strings and cables. Those are orientation clips. So when you take the strings and cables off of these clips, you don't want to twist the strings one way or the other a bunch because that is how it is oriented, how it was built with the serving and everything. You don't want to put a bunch of twists in or take a bunch of twists out because then when you replace it, your bow is going to be way out of whack and you're going to have to do some serious tuning. But if you replace everything as is, you're going to be really, really close on your tuning and you might only have to make a few slight adjustments, if any, but uh, we'll check that on the draw board and shooting it through paper and really try to figure it out that way. We're going to pull these off, put these on and continue with the build. We've got the ABB strings and cables on this bow. Everything is looking good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bow out of the press and measure the axle to axle. What we're looking for, this bow is a 30 inch axle to axle, so we want to be within one quarter inch for spec. And I'm just gonna measure axle pin to axle pin. I'm gonna burn an inch here. 29 and 7 eighths. So we're right inside that quarter inch of allowance. So we're gonna go ahead and put this bow back in the press, tie on knock sets and a D loop and uh, bolt on a rest, pop the peep sight in and uh, continue on with this build. I'm gonna save these old strings and cables, like I said, for if I were to have anything happen to these, I've got a fresh set on me. So we're looking to have the arrow go right through the center of that burger button which is right behind this little RX-7 plate. That is perfect. Okay. Now I'm gonna tie my top knock set first and then I'll stick an arrow in there. Give myself a little bit of variance for knock pinch and tie my bottom knock set. I'm just gonna stack some double overhand knots here. Cut these off, burn them.
That's money. Okay. All right, now we've got our Hoyt Integrate MX Aero Rest. This is the Micro Adjust Rest. We're gonna bolt this on. And it comes with its own little bit of D-loop material to feed through your cable down here. And it's got that lock technology so it can lock right into the back of the riser on this nice flat space here. So this rest also comes with a little package of Allen wrenches and bolts. You wanna open this, get everything laid out. It also has the felt that goes on the launcher so it doesn't make any noise when an arrow passes through it. Now, if you take this bolt out right here and pull this cover off, you'll see underneath there's a little screw for these jaws that open up. So you wanna take this screw and back it out a little bit, slide it onto the integrate system on the back of the bow, on the back of the riser right here. And on the back of the riser, there is a little indent, and I'll try to get the camera to see that, but there's a little indent. And you wanna line that indent up with this arrow right here that kind of centers the rest um, for your up and down movement. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, tighten this little bolt down, put the cover back on, and uh, start messing with the timing cord. Super, super easy system to set up. And we'll make sure this is nice and tight because if there's anything that's gonna slip on this rest, you definitely don't want it to be this. All right, we got that tightened down real good. We're gonna throw this cover back on. Now we're gonna take this timing cable and come on the outside, so the outside of the riser right here, and we're gonna serve it right through this control cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the press, take some tension off those cables. Just like that. Separate these cables here. Run this through. Then I'm gonna tie a knot right on the end of this. Now I'm gonna cut this little end off here. Flare it up real good. So that can't come undone. Then right there where that serving comes through right here just pull it up to right there put tension back on it just like that so there's a little set screw in here loosen that here you go see how that slides just like that snug this up then i'm going to draw the bow and let this come up and then as the bow is drawn and this is pulled, it'll just slightly move through here. And when the bow's at full draw, it'll pretty much just hold it there. And that'll give me a really, really good reference point of where the timing is going to be for this rest. I'll let the bow down, snug that up, and then uh, we'll check everything else through paper and whatnot and make sure that the rest is dropping properly and uh, not giving me any hiccups. But right there. So it pulled it out to right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down so it stays. That'll be a great reference point for our rest timing. Now I'm gonna drop a new peep sight in here. This is a 3 16 peep sight. I like the 3 16 It's just a good balance of accepting light and sight housing acquisition. Um, I really like 3 16 I've ran it for a long, long time. So. This little piece of serving material ABB has put in here to mark the center line of the threads. So we're going to take some tension off the string so we can separate that. All right, so I've got the new strings and cables on. I've got the peep put in the string. D-loop and knock sets tied. I've got the rest bolted on. I've got um, really everything set up and ready to put on the drawboard. 
and check the cam synchronization. All right, so we're getting ready to throw the bow on the draw board. I've got it adjusted on the mods to G, which G on the mods is 27 inches. That is my draw length. Both mods are adjusted. Also, I checked the cam up here to make sure that both cams were on 85% let off or 80%. Um, doesn't matter, but they both need to be in the exact same position to correctly check the cam synchronization. So now we're gonna hook it up on the draw board, draw it back and see where we're at. All right, so we're at 27 inches on the draw board and bottom draw stop is touching the cable and my top draw stop is off. So with my bottom cam touching at 27 inches, my top cam is slow. So I'm gonna adjust that by twisting the cables then we'll bring it right back to the draw board and uh, hook it back up again and see where we're at. So our top cam is slow, so we're going to take a full twist out of the top cable. So I've already got the tension off the strings. Pop this down here. back on the draw board and see where we're at. All right, I've taken one full twist out of the top cable, effectively lengthening that cable. We're gonna draw it, see where we're at. I got a comment from somebody on YouTube about this is a custom draw board that I built and somebody uh, made a comment about putting a turnbuckle in between here so that I can really fine tune that last little bit when it comes up and that is an exceptional idea I'm going to do that because what I'm having to do is sit back here and just barely creep on this handle and look at those draw stops and see where I'm at That's it. Okay. Click this in and let you see this here. So, the top draw stop right here is just touching. And the bottom draw stop right there is just touching. So, we have got this thing synchronized. There we go. Gonna let it down, put a sight on it, put some stabilizers on it. Make sure that the arrow is right through the center of the burger button. With that rest, shoot it through paper and see where we're at. All right, now we've got the cam synchronization perfect. We're gonna bolt a sight up on here and I'm gonna line my peep sight to where it aligns with the housing perfectly and uh, just put a quick tie in that peep sight. I'm probably not gonna tie it in fully yet. Probably gonna shoot it for a little bit, let those limb pockets settle in, let the strings settle into uh, the cam tracks and uh, then I'll make my final tie on my peep sight after shooting it for about a week or so. Okay, got the sight bolted on. Just gonna draw this thing and see where the peep sight needs to go. Peep sight's perfect right where it's at. Okay, it's good, that's what I wanted to know. Do a quick little tie on this peep sight and we'll shoot it through paper and see what it does. Like I say, all I'm doing is a couple double knotted overhand knots and uh, just tying the peep in real lightly so that I can shoot it through paper and everything and not worry about anything coming out. But I will do a much more thorough tie-in once I get everything set exactly where I want it. Sweet! Shoot it through paper. Boom. Paper tuner.
pretty easy. Now I gotta prop it up so it'll reach right there. That should be about right. Okay, let's shoot through it. I'm actually bolting up my stabilizers. Forgot to do that earlier. But I'm going with a very, very similar front and back bar mount as what I've got on my Ventum Pro. Obviously, the more I shoot this bow, the more I'm going to be playing with these weights and angles and stuff on the bars, but but to get it shot in through paper, I'm going to get it really close to what I want. My front bar setup is a 15-inch doinker, and my back bar setup is an 8-inch Hoyt Pro uh, Carbon Pro bar. On the back, I've got 8 ounces, and on the front, I've got 4 ounces, so it's a 1 to 2 ratio, and then down on the mini stabilizer, I've got 2 ounces. So um, a little more weight down low, and uh, I'm like I say, I'm going to be playing with weight front and back as well as angle, but I just wanted to hook these up on the bow now before I shot it through paper. So got these on, we're going to grab this arrow, put my release on, see what it does through paper. You gotta be kidding me. This is, okay, this is no joke, one take. When you set everything up correctly with the synchronization, the timing, the rest, bringing that arrow down through the burger hole, tying in knock sets and D loops that are clean and everything, you know, you don't get any knock pinch or anything like that and everything is working the way it should. This is what you want <laughs> out of paper right out the gate. This is literally the first shot through this bow. This bow hasn't been shot but one time, and I'll show you <laughs> what it just did on paper. Check this out. That is what you want. Four fletch. Just a perfect, perfect bullet hole. Look at this. That's what you want, guys. This thing is gonna be a sweet shooter. I gotta put another arrow through it. I'm gonna grab this and shoot it again, see what we get for a second hole. Gosh, I love it when you get it right the first time. All right, let's shoot one more. Yup. <laughs> oh, man. Another perfect hole. I'll take it. What a sweet bow. All right, it's good and dark outside. We're gonna wrap up this bow build, but uh, my gosh, I am excited about shooting this bow. I can't wait to get it out in the daylight, put it on the range, and just really get everything dialed with my peep sight and uh, the sight itself. Man. That makes me happy. Two arrows out of this bow, two bullet holes, tuned up, ready to rock. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. We've got the Hoyt RX-7 build finished. This thing turned out so sweet. She's finished, I appreciate you guys watching. These type of videos take a lot of effort with the filming, the production, and the editing side, so if you would, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this type of content, it means a lot to me and it helps the channel grow and ultimately helps my brand grow so I can put out more content like this. And uh, yeah, anyway, I appreciate you guys. I will be making more videos on this bow as I get it out on the range and get some arrows through it. My thoughts and opinions on how it shoots as well as just archery content. So anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends about the Whitetail Fit channel and hit that like button. I appreciate y'all. We will catch you on the next one. Peace.